Hello and welcome to my channel. I am Bearded Dev, and in this video, we're going to be doing another SQL tutorial. And in this video, we're going to be looking at the truncate statement. Truncate removes all data from a table or partition which is available in SQL Server 2016 onwards. Uh, so that's very beneficial in data warehousing loads for partition switching, which we will cover in another video. The identity value is also reset. It's minimally logged compared to the delete statement. So the other difference we'll see compared to the delete statement as well is there is no where clause with the truncate statement as the truncate statement will remove all data from the table. But we'll go through that shortly um, when we have a look at some examples. The truncate statement also cannot be rolled back we must have as a minimum the alter table permissions and um, we cannot use truncate on tables with foreign key constraints or that are part of an indexed view. So we'll jump over to SQL Server Management Studio now and go through an example of how to use the truncate statement. Right, so I have a staging table, customers STG2. Uh, I've selected all the data from that table and as we can see there's a very large amount of rows in this table over 11 million so I'll just go to the results grid and we can see there's only three columns in here ID full name and age now as part of our, our staging process what we often want to do is remove all the data from a table and then load in the new data this data has already gone to our, our fact table or we might be using this in a relational sense as well the, the data is no longer usable for us or no longer needed so as discussed if we were to just want to remove specific rows from this table that is where we'd be looking at using the delete statement with a where clause so if you need to remove specific rows you have to look at the delete statement in the scenario we are looking at we want to remove all rows so we could use a delete statement for that but we would have a large amount of logging. So with a delete statement, each individual row is logged because SQL Server needs to be able to roll back that statement. So SQL Server needs to maintain its consistency and atomicity. So in case of a system failure, it needs to be capable of rolling back that statement or completing it. So it's an all or nothing process. With Truncate, we're unable to roll back so it doesn't log each row, it just simply logs the data pages that have been removed. Another important point to mention about truncating tables is how it differs from actually dropping a table itself. So if we drop a table, we completely remove that table from the database. In this case, we're going to just be removing the data the table definition is going to remain exactly the same and as discussed in the introduction the identity value is also going to be reset so initially I'm just going to check what our identity value is um, so I'm just going to select the ident current and pass in this table uh, so customers stg2 uh, just that as current underscore identity so we go ahead and execute that and our current identity value is 11,617,000. So if I was to insert another row into this table, the next identity value would be plus one. Let's go ahead and truncate this table. So how we write our truncate statement is just the keyword truncate and then we're going to be truncating a table and then we give our table name, which in this case is customers stg2 so we're going to go ahead and highlight that now so we're going to completely remove over 11 million rows of data from this table so if I go ahead and execute this statement now that's completed successfully as we can see that was very quick if I was to run a delete statement against that table a delete all well a, not a delete all but a delete without a where clause so all rows would be removed then that would take a significant amount of time due to the logging. If I go ahead and execute the select statement, we can see all our data has been removed, but our table definition still remains. So we're still able to run a select, but there's nothing left in the table. 
if I run my I've just noticed I spelt that incorrectly I'll just correct that so if I go ahead and find the current identity value of this table it's now been reset to 1 so if you're looking at removing all data from a table and you're in a scenario where you need to keep the current identity value the way to do that would be pass the current identity value into a variable, truncate the table, and then reset the identity value to the, the variable value. I'm now going to reinsert the data back in this table, and then go ahead and run a delete without a where clause, and we can see the difference in speed this is going to produce. So I'm just going to write uh, an insert statement into our table. By the way, if you're not familiar with deletes, inserts or updates, there are other videos on my channel, so do go and check those out. I'll just give these column names that we're going to be inserting and then the column names that we're going to be selecting. They are named the same in both tables, so this is passing it from stage one to stage two. So I'll go ahead and execute that and I'll just pause the video because that's going to take a large amount of time. So that, uh, that statement has now completed successfully. We've got our 11 million rows back. So I'll just run a count all from this table to show that rather than running a select all statement. So there we have our rows back in our table. Now if I scroll down and write a delete statement, so I'm just going to delete from our table, I'm going to leave the WHERE clause blank, and I'm going to go ahead and execute that, and hopefully we can see a difference in the amount of time taken. So that delete statement has just finished, and as we can see in the bottom right hand corner, that has taken 46 seconds to complete, whereas the truncate statement was pretty much instant, and that is due to the logging issue. So with a delete, as I mentioned previously, each row needs to be logged, just in case we need to roll this transaction back, whereas with truncate, we're only logging the data pages that we're actually removing. So what is quite interesting uh, about Truncate is if we were working with a table with this large amount of rows, over 11 million or anything significant, and we wanted to keep a minimal amount of rows in there, what could be beneficial is to insert the rows we wanted to keep into another table and then truncate this table and then insert those rows back. So we could do that using a temporary table or a underlying table within the database and then drop that table after that process, which is a bit similar to the partition switching process in a data warehousing scenario. So I've just opened up a new query window just to go over the syntax of a truncate statement. It is very simple, it's just the keyword truncate, table, our schema, which is optional, and then our table name as well. So I really hope you have enjoyed that video. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. If you are new to the channel, check out my other videos. I do have a lot of videos on data development and business intelligence. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and hit that notification button. And feel free to share the video as well. Thanks a lot for watching.